This is Pat Soundbites Unplugged. Unplugged, the podcast where all the artists go to tell it as it is. Careers, music, tours, and more. And here's your host, the man that refuses to eat squid, Pat Calamari. Hey, Pat Calamari here, host of Pat Soundbites Unplugged podcast. Hope everyone is doing well today. Don't forget, I have launched a Patreon page, Pat Soundbites. For a very small fee, you can become a Pat Soundbites fan club member. Or the next tier, you can get early access to what I'm doing this week, who am I interviewing, and what's going on all before everyone else. Or I could even give you a shout-out on the podcast or maybe on the radio station. Or one step even higher... I've had artists talk to me and just given me exclusives just only for certain Patreon members. So please check that out, Pat's Soundbites on Patreon. Well, episode number 71 is a good one. One of my favorite classic bands, one of my favorite classic rock anthems. A little autograph. Remember them? Turn up that radio! Well, Autograph has done one even better. Got a chance to talk to original member and bassist of the legendary group, Randy Rand. Randy talking to me from his home down in Georgia. And uh, Autograph has released a new single, Souls on Fire. It officially is out on all digital outlets on Friday, May 29th. And even better... The proceeds are going to Trinity Health of New England, benefiting frontline nurses and healthcare workers. So they have the ability to purchase more medical equipment, more PPE, and other essentials. How cool is that? So we talk about the single, we talk about the artwork, we talk about Jimmy Bell, who recently replaced Steve Lynch. We talk about Autograph back in the day, Autograph, uh, their latest album came out in July of 2017, Get Off Your Ass, tracks that I've been playing for a while. I got a chance to interview Steve Lynch right when that album was released. Steve decided to move on and do other projects last year, replaced by the amazing Jimmy Bell. And we talk a lot more, so... uh, Sit back and enjoy, and uh, certainly go to their website, autographband.com. Check out their coffee, check out their T-shirts, and certainly go and buy this single, Souls on Fire. All great stuff, and I certainly will be playing and supporting Randy and this band. As always, live, love, and laugh a lot. Life is way too short. Enjoy. Here's Mr. Randy Rand of Autograph. Hey, this is Randy Rand from Autograph, and you listen to Pat's Soundbites Podcast, Unplugged. WBXO Classic Rock redefined in conjunction with Pat Soundbites Unplugged Podcast. Well, we're keeping new music alive on the radio as always, and I am honored to have original member and bassist of the legendary rockers autograph, and I'm talking Mr. Randy Rand. Randy, how are you, and thanks for your time today. Hey, my time is your time. I'm doing fine, man. Man, I mean, one of my favorite bands. I got to see you guys back in the day. I want to say open for Motley, open for Van Halen, and uh, Randy and uh, Autograph releasing a new single, Souls on Fire, which was out on Friday, May 15th on Bandcamp, and it will be available on all digital outlets this Friday, the 29th, via EMP label, our man Dave Ellison, and uh, it is a great song, and even better than that, proceeds go into Trinity Health of New England, benefiting frontline nurses and healthcare workers with the ability to purchase PBE, and other medical essentials. My goodness. Well, A, great song. B, I applaud anybody giving back 
to the folks in the front line. I come from an emergency service background, 30 plus years in emergency services. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Talk to me about Souls on Fire, Randy, the idea, the concept, and uh, the connection with uh, Trinity Health of New England and, and what got you guys the idea to say, hey, let's give back and do something good here. Yeah, man, I, I, that's, I can answer all those questions. Um, yeah, Souls on Fire is, is the first uh, song we've written with the new lineup with Jimmy Bell coming in for uh, Steve Lynch. Because Steve went, went off to do uh, other, other projects, which we do sometimes, you know. Oh, I got you. And so, yeah, so um, Jimmy Bell uh, brought in this idea, and uh, honestly, it, it didn't take that long to put it all together. It was pretty cool. It's, it's a good, t uh, good songwriting team, actually, right now. So, you know, it's like New Blood, and let's see which, what, what we can do. And uh, of course, you, um, Simon just is a great um, lyricist. So it, it, was, it was really fun to put it together. And the reason we uh, did that for the nurses and uh, the frontline workers is because Jimmy Bell's wife, I, I mean, excuse me, soon to be wife, <laughs> is, uh, is, is a nurse. And, and she let us know what's going on all the time. And so we just told that. We said, man, let, let's, what, what can we do for these people? They're just working their butts off, man. And that, that's how that came about. Very, very cool, and that makes all kinds of sense, and uh, again, uh, congratulations, and I applaud you, and great idea, and uh, yeah, I got a chance to talk to Steve when um, Get Off Your Ass came out in 2017, and obviously, you know, people move on and, you know, want to go on with certain projects and this and that. Talk to me about Jimmy Bell. You mentioned uh, you got a great songwriting team. What's the background on Jimmy for some of us that maybe not be familiar with Jimmy and uh, his musical uh, career so far well he's been around a, a while and uh, plus he's, he's in the house of lords that's another song oh okay right he does. and uh, he has a, a, another band called max explosion but he's, he came on board with us just because he really wanted to work with us which was good um he if, if anyone has a chance to look on facebook and look up jimmy bell you'll see how um, unbelievably good he is it's uh he's a just a great player, a great, a good singer too. That's, that didn't, that didn't suck either. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, autographs. We, we've always been a harmony kind of band, so that we didn't change that at all. Yeah, no, you guys have always been a great harmony band, and uh, I'll talk about Get Off Your Ass in a minute. You mentioned the songwriting process, so it's pretty much you and Simon, and now Jimmy comes in and comes up with this idea. Does it start with uh, the, 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 the the lyrics? Does it start with a guitar riff? How does that all work with you guys today now? But, but uh, Jimmy just says, he, Jimmy sends us ideas all the time, because he lives in Connecticut, I live in Georgia, and those two guys live in L.A., so we, we do like that virtual stuff all the time. So uh, Jimmy just sent this idea over, and we, uh, we went, whoa, this is really good. Uh, uh, Mark, a drummer, actually jumps in, too, so it's like all four of us are writing. Yeah, so, uh, you, it, it, it started off the guitar, and it was just a great lick, and it, it, we just had a lot of fun with it. Are you taking advantage of the technology these days? Like you said, you know, two guys are in L.A., two guys are on the East Coast, of setting back the WAV file, were you, or were you able to get into, find the time to get into a recording studio and um, work together and, you know, so you don't lose any magic in case somebody says, well, let's try this or let's try that. How did that, how was the recording process for this? Well, believe it or not, we, we actually just keep uh, showing back and forth ideas and then, and, and uh, our drummer uh, has a studio, and he's a professional uh, engineer, and so that helps a lot too. So uh, what we would do is, uh, Jimmy sent his in with Waves, and I actually just got on a plane and went to went to uh, LA to record. Uh, I, I, being a bass player, the Wave thing just doesn't come across that well. I don't know why it doesn't, but I, that's why I went to LA, and, and it was really fun to get in there and, and you know see the guys again and and uh, play. So there was a, a nice little magic there. It was a little... No, no problems at all. There was no push or pull. It was all good. Yeah, I'm not a musician, and I always just add the fact that 
Um, and I'm, a, I'm an oldie, I'm a big 70s rocker type of guy. And I, I always say, you know, the technology is great to be able to send wave files back and forth. But man, I would be afraid to miss that, like I said, that chemistry of Simon says, well, let's try this or let's try that when you, when you got everybody together. But you know what? You got to make it work for what we're dealing with. And now even dealing with worse. I really love the artwork. Where, who did the artwork and where did that come from? It came from EMP. It's, uh, they have a nice little staff over there. It's, um, but all, all we do is say, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this for the nurses and all that stuff. And so they put that, that nurse, uh, the nurse thing plus our logo, and we went, oh, that might be a T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I encourage everybody to go to your website, autographband.com, to check out. And while you guys are laying low with no live shows right this minute, hopefully we get to back to some normalcy. Certainly uh, promote and buy this uh, buy this track and buy a few T-shirts to keep uh, some sort of music flow going. You know, I want to jump into a... Get off your ass. As I said, I got a chance to talk to Steve back then. And, man, what a great album. I mean, I've been playing, keeping me, the guy keeping new music alive, I've been playing the title track. I played Every Generation. I played Lost My Mind in America. And it is certainly maybe a little bit heavier sound, but it's got that retaining signature, melodic, the harmonies, a little hard edge. But uh, it's a great, great album. My goodness. Oh man, I appreciate that very much. We we really enjoyed making it too. It was good. It, back, back in those days, um, way back in, in 2017, um, most of us lived lived in LA, and Steve lived in uh, Seattle, so it wasn't that hard to get back and forth. So that, that was easy, easier, much easier. Yeah, I mean, it just, I, I, like I mentioned before, I got to see you guys a bunch of times in the 80s, and it just always pulled my hair out going, why, you know, you're open for, I got, man, Dio, uh, Van Halen, I got to see you guys with, I got to see you with Motley Crue, and it just always drove me crazy why you just, it just never got you guys, even with Sign In Please and Turn Up the Radio, just never got you over the edge. I mean, was it because they just never considered you a hair band or a rock yeah, band? Sort of, I, don't know, I don't know why they call us a hair band. We're more like a night ranger or something like that. Yeah. But, yeah, why, why are you calling us hair bands? And all of a sudden, RCA is saying, okay, you're a hair band. Now we're going to sell you that way. And we're going, no, 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 no. But, uh, you know, it's... I wouldn't change anything, tell you the truth. I mean, I'd like, like to have done better with autograph, but I mean, last night, it just it moves the way it moves. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, it just... I mean, it just was a time where I'm like, why Why aren't these guys getting the attention that they really deserve? You got the exposure. You've been all over the place. You're on tour with all these bands. And I'm thinking, you know, somewhere I read, I'm like, oh, what a grass, a hair band. And I'm going, no, they're not. Not to me, at least. They were never a hair band. I mean, what the, I mean, yeah, you guys had hair, but it wasn't like to the point of Motley Crue or a white snake. You know, you, 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 you said... You, we were, we were, well, actually, we'd come out of the 70s, all, most of us did. You know, we were the 70s music kind of guys. And uh, I used to uh, play with Steve Plunkett um, before Autograph in a band called Wolfgang. That was from like 74 to 79. And so that's that's how that all got started. And we just did, we just did demos and stuff together all the time, me and, me and Steve did. And then I went on tour with Lita Ford in 1981, I guess, and playing in Europe. And... Uh, I got a call one day from Steve just saying, uh, you want to go on tour with Van Halen? Because they're our, our buddies. We all grew up together. And uh, I said, yeah. And I go, who's in the band? And he goes, I don't think you know any of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I flew in from New York because I was going to uh, read a second album. And uh, I, I walked in and I said, hi, my name's Randy. And he goes, this is Steve. Uh, uh, hi, and this is Steve. And hi, this is Steve. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> And it, I, I met the keyboard player back in the days when I was playing the, the club circuit in the early 70s, and I knew him kind of. Steve Lynch, I had no idea who he was, or Kenny Richards, I had no idea who they were. So it, uh, we, uh, we had like five rehearsals, got in a Winnebago, and the uh, first, first gig was in front of 15,000 people in Hollywood, Florida, with Ben Halen. 
Nice. I mean, yeah, three Steves and a Kenny and a Randy. I mean, like, I mean, what? Did you know? What, did you did you sense it, Randy, when you guys finished completing Turn Up the Radio? Like, man, this this is a theme. This is an anthem. I mean, it's one of my favorite rock songs of all time. I'm like, you you guys had to look at each other, going, we got something here. Yeah, we did. I, honestly, we did. I uh, guess we've been in the business long enough to know when that magic happens. It, you just know it. And uh, even the even the producers listened to it and went, "Okay, you guys are going to sell. Uh, you're going to have a gold album." Period. <laughs> and I went, "Hey, I, it's well, it's good. Thank you very much." And we did. You, you mentioned it went, to, it went to platinum later on, but it, it took a while. But it was, it's. It, but, well, what was funny is RCA did not want to put that damn song up. They did not want to. Really? Put what the? Uh, that's what I said. What the? <laughs> I'm like, are you crazy? I mean, it's a rock anthem. Any way you go, I mean, you, you guys, obviously, you, once you get back on on tour, everybody wants to hear that. Everybody knows the song and here. You, you know, sometimes you just shake your head, going, okay, well, whatever, you know. Yeah, I uh, even to this day, now we have like you know, ten year old kids that you know the parents and grandparents have turned them on to the autograph a long time ago. And they sit down in the front of the stage singing the songs with us. I'm like going, this, this is way too cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? No doubt about you. You know, you mentioned Lita Ford. I remember you standing out in that video. I want to say it was Alfred Blood or something, and you're, you're holding an axe. You're playing an axe, I yeah, think. Yeah, it's, it's an actual axe. <laughs> Just need to go, this would be funny. I went, okay, sure. Because at, the well, yeah. e because at the end of the video, you're like bashing the crap out of something with the axe, I say. I'm like... Yeah, it was a guitar. Yeah, I, was, I took the axe and, and it had blood in it. So back in the good old days, that was fun. That was, that was a fun video. Yeah, no, that's a great video. I, I mean, it sticks out when I when I think of you and I think of the lake. Oh, man, I love Lita Ford. I mean, uh, you guys still doing the coffee? Are you still selling the... Uh, yeah, yeah we, yeah, we still got coffee. got barbecue sauce. I, I think we have uh, uh, whiskey coming out, too. It's, it's, it's called fall, fall Off Your Ass. I love it. I you got all the listeners go to Autograph Band again. You can buy a T-shirt. You can buy some Italian rose coffee. Man, you got a little, you got a little whiskey coming. I gotta have to try that out. Okay, so it, we we have to taste, taste everything. <laughs> oh, hey, that, yeah, you got. I mean, you want to, you don't, you don't want to sell bad crap to anybody out there. Oh God, no! The coffee is really good. If you like, I mean, if you like dark roast, it's, it's really, really, really good. Pretty, pretty cool. Like, that is cool. Uh, what else do I got for you? Your first, your thoughts on your first show with a live audience. I mean, could you imagine, Randy, where we are today? I can't even think of my last live concert I went to. I want to say maybe Collective Soul. I got to hang out with those guys in February, but I can't even imagine what it would be like. I, I hope things are, I see a lot of drive-in movies, bands are playing in drive-ins where people get out of their cars and put out a lawn chair. What are your thoughts? of uh, getting back and uh, playing a little Souls on Fire and turn up the radio and get off your ass. Right. Uh, you know what? Uh, what's, uh, I, uh, my wife just said uh, bought me a trip um, for my birthday to Florida. We went down to uh, Panama City. There was nobody with a mask on. Nobody was staying six feet apart from each other. And it was almost real life again. So I think slowly but surely it's going to come back. But I have a feeling that the venues are going to be smaller more contained. Um, the drive-in thing, I don't think I could even do that. I don't think I'd even want to do that. <laughs> 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 they're sitting there looking at a bunch of cars instead of people. That just, ah, that just looks weird. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah, what do they hit the horn? I mean, I mean come on. That's... <laughs> as soon as you're done. Ah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Yeah, talk, talk about a talk about a migraine after the first two songs. I'm like, <laughs> no, no kidding. <laughs> it's like, okay, if you, if you like us, just hit it once. You don't have to keep hitting over and over again. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as a bassist, my friend, I always ask the bass player, what would you say is the best all-time bass line ever that you go, oh, that you know right away? Oh, uh, Chris Squire, uh, uh, in Yes, um, Roundabout. Oh, okay, cool. It's like I was a guitar player until 1970. I started in actually 1960. And um, he said, yeah, I'm old. I said, so when I first heard that from Yes, I went, oh, let me 
play on bass. So let me let me try this. And I, I went, yeah. And then I heard Paul McCartney, and I went, oh wait, let's go a little bit further into this. And then this, like after that, all I was hearing was bass licks and bass lines instead of guitar lines. That's when I knew it was the time to go play again. Is, is it? Well, is that what what got you started musically? How did you know? Like you said, yeah. I mean, besides, like, like you said, Paul McCartney. Was it the Beatles watching on the Ed Sullivan oh, Show, or was I, anybody in your fam anybody in your family musically inclined? Yeah. Or yeah, my mother was a singer. Uh, my dad played piano. Um, I, I was raised in the gospel world, big time, uh, the Pentecost. So I was doing a lot of all the religious stuff in, uh, early. And then I was doing bluegrass, uh, you know, mandolin and, you know, stand-up bass and guitar. And then I saw the Beatles, and then I was done. I was totally done. So that's it, man. He's, I said, okay, getting a bass, starting to sing, and there's, oh, my God, and there's women in the audience, too. That helps a little bit. I had a lot, I had a lot to do with it. <laughs> a little bit had a lot to do with it. Because I was a horrible athlete. <laughs> while while we're in lockdown, uh, well, well, at least for the last couple of months, have you? Uh, what, what what keeps you busy? You got family? You started a new hobby, cooking? You're still writing great songs. What do you? What's yep, right. keeping you busy I, these I, days? I do a lot of cooking. Uh, I was going to be a chef after when I was the eighties, <laughs> then I found out they don't make any money, and I went for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, so no, I have I have a granddaughter. We we have her like every week. So she she really makes my life quite like happy. Makes me feel like a kid again. Of course, I garden and do all that stuff that old guys do. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, yeah, no, I hear you. And a lot of guys are saying, you know what, they're catching up on doing the house projects that they normally they'd be on the road, you know, or fixing up the studio or doing a little gardening or doing a little something. So uh, it's all been good. So what's the game plan, Randy? With We got Souls on Fire. Is um, Do we expect a, a full EP, four or five more songs or an album? Or was this just a, a, a one idea wonder? What's the plan down the road for this new lineup and uh, our favorite band autograph doing? Well, we, uh, we actually have about four or five in, in the um, in the oven right now. So, yeah, we'll probably do an EPR album. We, we just can't stop ourselves. Yeah, no, please don't. Keep keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's very fun working with these guys. It's, it's like, like everyone goes, what do you think? Call, call yourself autograph. And you go, yeah, we can. It's, it's every band has a different, uh, you, you evolve, you evolve, you evolve. And like a lot of people leave, they come back, they go away, it's like, Yes, we are autographed and we stand with that because that we got the same feel for the music. It's still the, the harmonies. We're a little heavier now because it's just funner to play heavier. Put <laughs> <It is. laughs> well, the keyboard, yay! <laughs> yeah, and, and you know what? I guess like anything else, you when you know Steve leaves and you get a, a, a new Jimmy Bell, there's just a new excitement, right? A new ideas, yeah, new yeah, excitement. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what, what uh, Steve Lynch wanted to do too. He wanted to get something in his blood again it wasn't getting anymore in the, out of the band which is no big deal I mean I, it was a big deal at first when we went oh no what do I want to do I went oh yeah and the funny thing is Jimmy Bell is uh, Steve Lynch's friend big friend so that was that kind of fun so did like Steve kind of said hey I got a guy to replace me or they just no, no, I, 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 actually when, when uh, the word went out that we were looking for a guitar player Jimmy calls me and goes well why, why look any further I went okay you're right I, I don't need to look, look any further Boy, that's perfect. I mean, here's a guy, House House of Lords, everybody knows him. He's got the experience. He's been around. This isn't his first rodeo. So it, that works out great, man. I can't wait to see you guys. Are you still doing, I, re, I read somewhere you had a career in leather making. Are you still? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, for 20 years I did that. Nah, it's, it's, I had enough of it. Uh, I, I went into major production with a you know, factory and lots of employees and Give me a headache. Because <laughs> I started off doing it. I started up doing it for uh, it's for fun. And then when um, the band pretty much fell apart, and uh, no one was hiring hair band guys anymore, so I had to figure out something to do with my life. So that's what I did. Because I, 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 I was doing leather most of the time anyway, just for fun, making you know uh, straps, guitar straps and stuff for Molly and sticks and stuff like that. So I just. Went off and did that for a while. It was very successful, and then I was done with it. <laughs> well, hey, you know what? It's another skill, another talent that you could always, uh, you know, do something for your grandchild or something like that. There's... Oh, sure. 
there's nothing uh, nothing more personal than having it, you know, that you made it yourself. Well, that's cool. Well, the single is called Souls on Fire. Proceeds go to the Trinity Health of New England. It's a rocking song. It's great artwork. I encourage everybody. It comes officially out Friday on digital outlets. I ask everybody to buy it. None of this bull crap of stealing it and downloading it. These guys work really hard, especially where the proceeds are benefiting frontline nurses and healthcare workers. For for Randy and the guys, go to autographband.com, buy the coffee, buy a t-shirt, sit tight, and uh, we get kind of excited for the release of their uh, their uh, upcoming uh, album, and I see these guys on the road. Randy, I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as I have. It's been a it's been a fun chat. Oh yeah, absolutely, my friend, absolutely. We will catch you again uh, when we get the, the green light, and I will continue to uh, play. I can't wait to start playing this on the radio show and uh, get folks interested, and uh, can't wait to see you on the road. Uh, awesome, dude. Uh, and thank you. Uh, nice questions. I didn't have to, like, run around going, oh, what should I say about this? What should I say about that? Direct questions. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, and I, I'm a, I'm a, I, no, I've been doing this too long. I'm an easy going, honest guy. I don't throw no curveballs, and it's it's fun. And I, my job is to promote you as much as I can. And I'm a rocker, and I love it. So it uh, works out really good. Randy Rand of Autograph, and his <laughs> soul's on fire on WBXO, <laughs> classic rock redefined, and Pat's soundbite. It's unplugged.